But I told you that salvation by confessing the Lordship of Jesus does not automatically bring you into the experience of victory. Please listen to that. It is rather concerned with giving you access. The second aspect of walking in the experience of liberty is called knowing the truth. <laughs> knowing the truth. Knowing the truth, my God. That means in addition to receiving life from the Savior, you need to know the truth. You have met the Savior, but you need to know the truth that He brings. If you do not know the truth that came with the Savior, you will remain defeated even though you genuinely met the Savior. What is knowing the truth? It describes the whole process from accessing light to being transformed by it. When the Bible talks about knowing the truth, it's the holistic capture of the entire process from accessing light after you are saved to being transformed by it. Ye shall know the truth, and the truth that you know shall set you free. The word know there is beyond just awareness. He's not just saying you will be aware of an information that is correct. That is, no, 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 no. No. You can be aware of an information and it profits you nothing. So when the Bible talks of knowing the truth, it's a deeper statement than English just gives to us. The idea to the layman is being aware of an information. No. Knowing the truth is a, is a journey on its own. A journey from accessing that light, that truth, until you become transformed by it. Knowing the truth requires three steps. Let me give them to you. Knowing the truth, based on the Bible's idea, requires three steps. Number one, access to the truth. Knowing the truth requires, number one, access to the truth. The first way you begin your journey to knowing the truth is to even have access to it. Access to the Word. Access to the Holy Spirit. Access to the ministry of the teaching priest. You see that? These are the three ways by which God communicates truth to us. Number one, his word. Number two, the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Number three, the ministry of the teaching priest. If you ignore the ministry of the word, if you ignore the ministry of the Holy Spirit, and if you ignore the ministry of the teaching priest, there is no opportunity for you to access truth again. You will find out that you will be saved, but you will never come into the victory that is in Christ. Let me remind you again, if you are in pursuit of truth, these are the three areas to look at. Number one, the word of God. Sanctify them by thy truth. Thy word is truth. Are we together? The entrance of thy word giveth light and understanding unto the simple. Number two, the Holy Spirit. He is called the spirit of truth. When he, the spirit of truth, is come, he shall guide you into all truth. That is John 16 from verse 13. He shall guide you. He's called the spirit of truth. That means his advocate is that of truth. You can trust his ministry. The spirit of truth. And then number three, the teaching priest. Jeremiah chapter 3 and verse 15. And I will give you pastors or shepherds according to my heart. And if they are pastors or shepherds indeed, they will feed you with knowledge and understanding. The utopian Enoch was reading and he did not understand and God brought Philip to him and he said, please tell me, who is this man talking about, himself or another? And he began to expantiate and expound the truth for him. And it was on account of the ministry of the teaching priest that he got saved on his chariot and highlighted when he saw a pool and said, there is water here, nothing stops me from being baptized. And as soon as he was baptized, the spirit of God took Philip truth. There are many believers who want to grow, but they do not know where to search for growth. The word of God, the ministry of the Holy Spirit, and the ministry of the teaching priest. Let me tell you the truth. When God really wants to help you, he grants you access to a man of God 
that he has given the grace for light. Woe betides a believer who does not have the privilege of sitting under the mentorship of a teaching priest. I tell you, your Christian journey will be a cycle of pain. Pain that will make you distrust God. You will wonder and say, is this is, what I'm reading in the Bible, is it real? You see, most of us men of God do not understand the reason why the Bible says we will be judged. Because the privilege of priesthood is God giving you access, literally, access to the destinies of men. You are walking, representing God to mold and make or break and destroy the destinies of men. And that comes by the quality or otherwise of the spiritual information that is given to them. What you are learning from here week in, week out, that is what is shaping your understanding onto a life of victory or onto a life of defeat. Are you seeing that now? It is a risk to submit yourself, submit your mind, submit your understanding. And then for families that are here, you imagine a man and his wife and the three children. These are the three boys that represent the future of that family. And all of them come to sit under a man of God. It is not only the man's destiny that is at a risk. His future is at a risk. Because what he's learning is also what the children will learn. So if it is error, that entire generation has been destroyed. It is the reason why God will judge teachers. He will say, where did you get this one that you are teaching? You got this one because you are hungry. And you went to the extent of deceiving people. You got the money, but you destroyed destinies. The prophet that should emerge did not emerge. You hid the truth. You were afraid of being criticized. And you did not say this. You didn't say that. Hallelujah. You see the reason why the work of priesthood is not a vocation. It's not something you look at just when you are hungry. And you say, well, I applied for civil defense. My name didn't come out. I applied for um, immigration. My name didn't come out. Well, I, there's at least I hear that pastors get money, free money from people. Let me try ministry and see. That corrupted motif alone. If God brings people to you, you would destroy their destiny. And because Africa is a very religious continent, you see that now? When you go to school, there is a date for graduation and you leave that school. But when you are under a spiritual structure, you are usually there for the rest of your life. Are we together now? Yes. If you receive error for any reason in school, it can be corrected. At least you stop going there. But once you are on, there are people who are in church, they started coming to church when they are 10 years. Now they are 50, 60 years. Your destiny will be at the mercy of the correctness or otherwise of the truth you have received. And I want you to pay attention to what I want to share with you now. Access to the truth starts by access to the word, access to the ministry of the Holy Spirit, and access to a teaching priest. A teaching priest doesn't matter what form or fashion it comes a teaching priest what makes a teaching priest a teaching priest is beyond a good heart you can be a sincere man of God but not be a teaching priest if you are not a teaching priest don't teach do what is within the jurisdiction of your grace are we together now to teach means to bring people into a comprehension of a truth and there is a grace for that it is not just something you decide. A teaching priest is more than brain work. It's the product of the spirit of revelation. Granting you access to doctrine. Granting you access to principles and the ways of God. In an unusual way for the sake of the people sent to you. So the excellency of the preaching, uh, teaching priest is beyond his study life. Is beyond his level of intelligence. All those things are enhancers. The grace for the teaching ministry is an endowment from God. If you don't have it, no matter how you do, it will be clear that this grace is not on you. You will destroy people. Let me tell you the truth. If you have the grace of a teaching priest, God can walk through your limitations, even linguistic limitations. And you will see that even though you may not be as articulate, but because of the spirit that flows through your words, the people will understand what you intended to say. And it will not deceive them. That is the difference between oratory and utterance. 
when God grants you utterance to speak his counsel, both the learned and unlearned will eventually understand you. They can pick the spirit communications from what you are saying. And even though you are limited, I'm not saying you should not train yourself. When you have utterance and oratory, it's a beautiful combo that helps you to articulate truth with clarity and precision. But that even if you are limited physically, when the spirit of revelation is upon you, and God has given you the mandate of a teaching priest, you will be surprised that no matter how simple or complicated you are, the spirit of God can move through your frailty and insist that the people understand you. Are we learning? Access to truth. The second layer to knowing the truth is to hear and receive the truth. You can have access, ladies and gentlemen, but not hear and receive. I'll give you an example of those who had that. The scribes and the Pharisees had access to truth. Their issue was never access. They were in almost all of Jesus' crusades. But they did not hear and they did not receive. While Jesus was preaching, they were just looking for where to get trouble, where to pin him down. One time they met Jesus sitting, maybe preparing, meditating, preparing, and they brought up all kinds of issues. Issues of the, uh, you know, the woman who was caught in adultery, the woman who was, um, 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 you know, um, the, the gentleman who was about to be healed, that he said, your sins are forgiven. Ah, that became, he said, who are you to forgive sins? And they brought up another issue. And they would never listen to the truth. It was Nicodemus, one among them, that listened carefully and said, No, this what this man is saying. And he smuggled himself and came to him by night. John 3, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher sent from God. For no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. And that discussion is what led to John chapter 3 down to 16, 17. Many people have access to light, but many people are not intentional about hearing and receiving. Do you know people come to church like this and you will be surprised the many things that happen while the word is coming. Destiny defining truths, light from heaven through his vessel. God comes to men through men. He saw the captivity of Israel. And he said, I am come down. And that happened through the man, Moses. So God ministers to men through men. I have commanded a widow to feed you. But when Elijah met the widow, he said, I can't remember any command. When was she commanded? When the prophet said, go and make me this. That was God speaking to her through him. God speaks to men through men. Primarily. So people get distracted for instance in church while this is happening another person is thinking calculating profits typing text messages doing all that they are doing and those distractions are largely demonic why do you think satan comes to church to hear what i'm saying he comes to church because you are coming to church everywhere god is satan wants to be there too because he knows that everywhere god is there is something that will lead to life and everywhere God is, He gives men what He can steal, He can kill, He can destroy. So every time Satan is looking for what to steal, he first looks for where God is going. Because every time God shows up, He gives things to men. And that's what Satan wants to steal. Are we together? A man can receive nothing except it is given to him. So Satan knows um, they are on their way to church and he comes to. He doesn't have to be invited. Hanging around the corridors of where the saints are and is waiting quietly. And the moment a word is coming that is explaining why your life, your family, your ministry is where it is, he distracts you using all kinds of things from slumber to carelessness to whatever it is. And you find out that your word just slips. May your mind be at a light to receive that which is yours in the name of Jesus. You want to be transformed by the light of God to experience liberty? You access the truth. That means you must come within the proximity of where the truth is. Listen, how many of you know that if you see, let's say for instance, our father in the Lord that the Jew, you hear that he's holding a crusade somewhere. How many of you know that if you are trusting God for healing, by coming close to the crusade ground, 
your chances for that healing is already increased is that true the man that they tore the roof and brought him down do you think that man would have been healed at home like that most likely not even the one who was healed at home there was someone who came near jesus to plead for him proximity to where god is walking is proof that you will encounter that god did you hear what i said this is why it is important for believers to not miss the gathering of the saints proximity 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 and then hearing and receiving the truth most believers don't hear most believers don't receive most believers don't concentrate access to light but then they do not receive what is the third area when you want to know the truth you access the truth by the ministry of the word the ministry of the holy spirit and the ministry of the teaching priest and then you hear and receive the truth the light that is communicated and then number three now listen to this one you must submit to transformation with reference to that truth you must submit to transformation with reference to that truth i'll take it again coming close to the truth and interacting with the truth is wonderful but that does not get the job done hearing and listening is profitable but that in itself does not get the job done you must be willing to submit yourself to transformation and i'm getting to the zenith of our discussion tonight transformation by the reference of that truth you have found this is what administers liberty i'm going to be showing you how transformation leads you to victory but it's important do not forget these three steps when you find your life defeated when you find your life miserable if you are not saved you already know that the first diagnosis is that i need salvation a genuine encounter beyond the man of god beyond the church then when that happens and you stop there you say after all i'm born again oh there oh there oh there an heir as long as he's a child he differed not from a slave responsible parents you will never carry say the key to your car let's assume you bought a house in the name of your child will you give the child that house at age five please talk to me will you give that child or you open an account for that child from the time the baby was born you deposited one million and you said i will keep depositing one million every year or five million every year by the time the child is 18 or 20 or 25 then i will give it to him as a gift the question is why are you not giving the child even at age 10 that child has 10 or 20 million in his account that you built for him but you're not going to give the child why because of immaturity every time you are not transformed blessings become burdens blessings become causes good things destroy when it comes into the hands of people who are not transformed there are many of you today you forced your way into things that you thought are blessings but the requisite level of transformation that gives you the stamina and the stature to maximize it you see that now you can give your 10 year old child a car and that car becomes the reason why you are arrested or he's arrested or the reason why the boy is killed and forever if they ask you why did your child die in this example you will leave him pain he did not die because you slaughtered him he died because you gave him something that his growth was not yet ready for are you seeing that many of our prayers don't carry this illusion that just because you are talking to god he must answer everything answers depend on many factors before they arrive to the saints among them your level of transformation lord give me a 500 members and god looks at you and weighs you and says no the safest point for you in ministry is to have 200 members if i give you 800 members or a thousand members do you have the patience have you grown to manage the complexities that comes with dealing with people like this do you understand the principles of a thousand members will usually be called from different walks of life do you have the intelligence to communicate truth such that everybody feels blessed 
Hear me again. Without growth, blessings can become burdens. Blessings can become causes without transformation. There are many people what you have prayed for now. If God should answer it, that becomes the reason why you die. Not an attack. There are certain levels of anointings people pray carelessly for. And sometimes in church, we, God knows He is a merciful God. Just because you package an envelope does not mean the grace will come on you. There is a spiritual immigration system. You have to pass through it first. Are we together? There are times that you can kneel down before a man of God and say, I want double portion of your anointing. What leaves you from him is his hunger. Not his anointing. It's the hunger that you get. Just because you fell down does not mean that it. The man and God knows that nothing came to you. It's just that he can't start explaining all that thing to you and you say, you are blessed. Just go. That hunger leads you to this. Now, let me tell you this. Most believers do not know that transformation is the end point of your receiving truth. If you receive light and don't submit to the transforming power of that light, you will never be able to become what that light intended for you to be. Ever learning, but never coming to the knowledge of the truth. So what was the purpose of learning? Learning was supposed to bring you into an experience, but it failed to do so because the learning path you are getting it, but you have not immersed yourself into that truth. I receive, I manifest your power and your wisdom till the nations see Jesus. Lifted up. Wow, how God anointed Jesus with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good. We believe that this message has done good to you, and um, we believe that God is transforming you and setting burdens in your heart, even as you've watched this video today. Please, if this is your first time of connecting with us, do so by subscribing to this channel. Click on the notification bell so that you can get daily uploads. Like the video and share it to your loved ones because God is set to do wonders in your life. And we believe that God is changing your life for good in Jesus' name. Amen. Remain blessed. Hallelujah.